minutes. Another common mistake is to call this 55 because whenever we think of a halfway point, we tend to think of 50 and not 30. Uh, but no, this is 35. 55 would be over here after the 20. So this is 290, 35 minutes by my eyes. Okay. Okay. So now, we get our alignment. We get our alignment, read the angle for once, and then we move it away. Then we do it again. Put it toward the center, find that perfectly, and then we move it away again, and then one more time. There we go, there we go, and then what, read that, get it again, do it for five times. Take the average of those five measurements, it should be very, very close to 180, uh, a little bit more since we're going on the right edge of the lines, and then you're going to use that value for error analysis. You're, later on, you're going to be finding uh, different values for different colors and you're going to compare those to this average we just found here. We'll see later. All right, now, now we're ready for some good data. We are going to be finding the first order greens on both sides. The first order greens. It'll look something like this. And we're going to match the crosshairs up to the right edge just like always. So, I move this over until I find the first order green. Now, once again, I gotta be careful. If I go too far, I'll encounter another green, but that's second order. We want first order. We want first order. So I find that, align it nicely, take the angle. That's theta L for theta left. And then I go to the right side to find that angle, theta R. And then I have my two numbers, theta L and theta R. So, let's see what we can do with these. Let's see what we can do with these. All right, the first order of business is we need to convert our minutes to degrees. So, if we have, say, say for example, we have 160 degrees and 45 minutes for theta L. Well, that's 160 plus 45 over 60 to convert to degrees, giving us 160.75. And suppose theta R is 199 uh, degrees and 19 minutes, same thing, 199 plus 19 over 60 to give us 199.3167. All right, so once you have converted these to degrees, then you compare it to what I told you from before. We have our average for the center. Take theta L plus theta R, divide by two. Both of these numbers should be very close together around 180. And if they're not, if this is not, you know you washed up somewhere. Okay, so now, what are we looking for? What are we looking for? What we want is the angle to plug into this. We want the angle to plug into this. So let's get nice and close up here. Let's get nice and close up here. What we have here is we have the undiffracted light coming in, and then the green here, and then the green here. And this is the angle we want right there, right there. So let's see here. From here to here, from here to here, this is theta L. From here to here, from here to here, that's theta r. Okay, okay. So if I take theta r minus theta l, I will get half of what I need. I will get this. I will get this. So I just got to divide by 2 to get this what I need. And that's what I need. Okay. So... For our values, let's see here. So we calculate, plug in and calculate theta green, and I find 19.2833. And that's, as I said, is what we need to plug in here to find D, the distance between the slits. We're given the wavelength of green as 5,460.7 angstroms. And then we have to divide that by the sine 
of this angle. But we have to be careful. Just a little note, we are using Excel. And in Excel, if you take a trig function, it needs to be in radians. So just a reminder, we need to change the radians if we're putting it into Excel. So, so this is how you put it into Excel. So 19, 2, 8, 3, 3. We need to multiply this by pi and divide by 180. So in Excel, it's pi, open, close parentheses, and then divide by 180. There we go. There we go. And this gives us, this gives us this. This gives us this. For our example, 16,000, on the order of 16,535.558, Angstroms. That seems awfully large. That seems awfully large. So let's put this in a better context to get a, you know, to something we can relate to. Change this to centimeters. So times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters over angstroms. And then we want to find the slits per centimeter. We take the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse, as we said in high school. And that comes out to be 6047, around that, around that. Slits per centimeter. Slits. We have to pause for a moment. We have to acknowledge a moment of awesomeness here. Look at this, 6,000. About six thousand. Come, come get her. Come here. Come here. Give me, give me. Look at that diffraction grating. Oh, look at that. Get a good look. There are six thousand slits per one centimeter. That's remarkable. Okay, that concludes the moment of awesomeness. Now, now we're done with the mercury. We have our D. Now we need to switch to hydrogen. So you call over the professional in the room, the TA, to change your bulb. Now I have to admit, this will be hot, but I tend to just grab it with my hands, mainly because I'm protected by another level of machismo. However, I want to set a good example, so we will grip it. Out goes the mercury. In comes the hydrogen. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. All right. So once again, we can see our different orders. And what we're interested in is the blue-purple, the blue-green, and then the red and then the red. And it's the same thing as before. It's the same thing as before. Line this up. It's the same thing. So for each of those, for each of those, I want to find theta left and theta right for each of those three colors. So it's the same thing. I find the theta left for one. Find the theta right for, say, the blue-purple. And then for the blue-green, same thing. Find the theta left theta right, theta left, theta right for uh, the R, for the red. And now, and now that we have our data, now that we have our data, we can use this to find the wavelengths. We can use this to find the wavelengths. So for some general wavelength, we have our D from before, and then once again, once again, the difference in the theta is divided by 2. Take the sign of it, make sure you're in radians. And then we have our three wavelengths. And then, once you have the wavelengths, find your three Rydberg constants for hydrogen. Then take the average, and you've done it. Congratulations. You've found a universal constant. Goodbye. <laughs>